Hello and welcome to the Under Centre Podcast. I am your host, Darren Maher, and I am joined by two of the most recent signings by the Jacksonville Jaguars to play tight end, former safety Fionn Malloy and former running back Jake Woolhead. So lads, tell me, who's tight end two and who's going to be tight end three? Well, I think, I think I have we a lot can both experience. agree we have great tight ends. I do have I do squat a little bit, so definitely have a tight end myself. I also have more experience as a tight end slash fullback. Slash I don't think back. you do, buddy. And, I played the and... entire first season of Pirates football at tight end. I don't know if you could talk about the Pirates every first season of playing football. Snap. Every single snap, because quite often we didn't even have eleven. I played my first season as the starting tight end, actually. I'll have That's you know. That's true. That's true. So yeah. But anyway. Top two tight ends on the on the, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Anyway, we can say that for sure. <laughs> but yeah, obviously this all re- revolves around the Tim Tebow move. So guys, what, what what do you think of this former QB? Well, QB in quotation marks um, playing tight end for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't know. It's a bit of a buddy buddy signing. I think like I I don't think he has any real chance of being a, an NFL starting tight end. But you never know. He obviously has some ability to throw a ball if it's not that great as a quarterback. It might be a better uh, tight end throwing a ball and trick plays maybe. I don't know. But I certainly don't see him going very far as a tight end. Well, Tim Tebow did. He did the college football gig on one of the networks, and I know Urban Myers did the football, the college football gig on one of the networks. Were they on the same network? I don't remember. Is, yeah, is this literally at Florida as well? This is literally a buddy buddy situation where it's like, "Here, oh, lad, I'm it? after retiring from the baseball. Give us a job for a while. Stay <laughs> on and do a bit. Of, maybe he's going to do a bit of coaching on the side, and it's just his way of saying, "Well, I still want to yeah, work maybe. out because I'm a massive drug addict." Who loves Jesus? Are you not thinking of Johnny Manziel <laughs> or is that Tebow? Well, I I say drug addict. I meant to say steroid addict because there's no way you get that size without a few roids in you. That's fair, actually. Yeah. And well, he's in the baseball. He's in the baseball. They basically don't test in baseball. <laughs> look, for me, it's kind of like I saw that move and you know what I instantly thought of? I instantly thought of, you know, back when you were kids and you play football and then your manager's like son or like your manager's best friend's son comes and plays for the team, but he's absolutely useless. So they're like, <laughs> okay, we're going to play him up front because that's where he'll do the least amount of damage. So let's bring in Tim Tebow because he's a mate of mine, but let's put him as tight end because that's where he'll do the least amount of damage. Yeah. I think I, I my could... favorite part is seeing all the former players on Twitter Get so salty that he's the one that got back to the league. They didn't. I saw Des Bryant go crazy. Like, Des, you were asking for 10 million. You haven't caught a ball in five years. This guy's going to be probably on vet minimum. He's just happy to be there. Thank Jesus. And like, there's a big difference between those two scenarios. Kibo's probably also only got to play about 5% of the snaps. Let's be real. Like, if he doesn't yeah. do special teams, he's not going to be a st- like on the, the field at all, really. In fairness, but he, in fairness to him, I think he would do special teams. Judging yeah, by yeah. his work ethic when he was a pro, I definitely wouldn't pass put a pass him to be like, yeah, I'm going to leg it down this pitch every single play. Yeah, but also I say every edge rusher is licking their lips at the prospect of <laughs> Tim Tebow trying to block them next year in any plays that he is. Because he can't go out just for plays that they're going to throw the ball because every team will then just realize okay Tim T was on the field they're going to throw the ball let's just hang back so he's going to have to be in there so for some blocking plays as well I don't know if he's going to be able to block a let's say for an example I don't know if they're even going to face them this year but a, a TJ Watt are you going to block a TJ Watt you know Aaron Donald will come out of nose tackle to play on the edge just so he can go up against Tim Tebow and I would love to see that matchup because Tim Tebow would have an Aaron Holds Aaron Donald size footprint in his chest after that play, would is be Timo, fantastic. Is Timo much of an athlete? In, in ter- is he well, fast? Is he well, athletic? I just, I Jake, we're on the same page here. I just googled what Tim Tebow's <laughs> forty-yard dash Uh-oh. time. No, was. don't say it. Don't say it. Don't yeah, say I'll give it. you a guess. Go ahead. What's your guess there? I'm gonna I'll say. Go, I'll go. Four, I'm gonna say five ten. Oh, I'll go four nine two. Okay, you didn't give him that much credit. He got a four seven one. Not fast by quarterbacks. Oh, this. Okay. This day and age, but a four seven one. But for extra, well, how long credit, ago you was know, that? Exactly, I was about to ask you for extra credit. Can you tell me what draft class year he was in? Oh, that is a great question. I want to say twenty eleven. I want to say I would have said twenty thirteen. 
He was 2010. So he ran a 4-7. Oh, wow. He ran a 4-7 11 years ago. How old don't is know this about you, lads, now? But I, I He's can't been out of the league respect. like eight years. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I'm 26 and I cannot run as fast as I could when I was 15. Eight, <laughs> and that, How old is he? <laughs> he is, and I'll Google this now. Uh, He's got to be in his 30, surely, isn't he? Oh, easily. He's got to be... Gotta be Aaron Rodgers' age, I'd say. I cannot be thirty. I don't think he'd be like thirty-seven. He must be thirty-two. Thirty-three. Yeah. Okay. It makes sense. I give he's you. I'll also give Rangers. you extra bonus points if you tell me where he's from. Is he where he was from... born? Okay, let's call it where he's born then. Oh Jesus, he's Is from Jacksonville. States? It's not the United States. No. Oh, what? Is it Canada? It's not Canada. What? Uh, the. Trinidad and Tobago. It's not Trinidad and Tobago. In fact, I'll tell you the city name and you still won't know where it is. Okay. Go on. Makati. M-A-K-A-T-I. Apologies, anyone from there listening. I is it like uh, on the Asian continent? I'm not going to give that much away. Well, I wouldn't like There's still a lot of countries in the Asian continent. Okay, yeah, okay. You um, can have the Asian continent, yeah. Philippines. Philippines is correct. Yeah, no bonus points. First try. That... First try. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're editing out the previous tries, obviously. <laughs> he's the only man. He's, he's the only man on Wikipedia who, under the section career end, has two dates: 2015 <laughs> and 2021. All right, that's interesting. Then, presumably, like, his yeah. first baseball or his first football career and his first baseball career. All right, I, wouldn't it same... be great? If he plays a couple of years at tight end, retires, and then goes back to baseball, <laughs> this man's got like a, a he huge didn't, career. He didn't even make it to the majors. Like he made, he it, made to it to like triple their A level though. below. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't is, know how that works out, but it's, it's not obviously MLB level. It's pretty impressive from everything I've gone for. Given that he didn't actually play that much baseball when he was a kid, but from everything I read, it's it's not bad. But like this, there's guys who've played baseball since they were six. And they're doing well to be in Triple A. So, and apparently he wasn't that bad. He did it. He had a pretty good batting average. They're crazy into stats in in yeah, baseball. So did. he was mediocre, but mediocre is actually quite good in in the Triple A standard when you look at his career. So, so he was a, a pitcher or a, what's no the other one? no? I think he was. He might batter. have been a first baseman. Oh, he, okay. Everyone has to bat. I don't know like how it works. Cricket. Like the pitcher, a bit like cricket. Bat? Everyone has to bat, and then the defensive positions are kind of where you. Where you play. All right. On the same vein of people that play in the NFL and are not from the States originally. Okay. Yeah. You know F.A. Abada? Yes. London. Where? Yeah. Is he London born? I don't know. It could be, but that was a good guess, wasn't it? Actually, where was he born? Oh, probably some African. Yeah. It is. It's not. I just Googled it. Sorry. My bad. I didn't know we were going <laughs> guessing. Some, some I didn't know we were going guessing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me see. NFL players. Born outside, non-American. Let's see. No, you don't Google it. You've already had a. Google. No, no, no. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mean to Google. I thought you were asking a genuine question, not a quiz question. So that's why I Google. Dara, yes. You you on Google this? Um, okay. Okay. So where was F.A. Abada born? He's English, so that's a fake clue. Oh well. I feel bad. I'm, I'm, would it be on? Can it would it be on the continent of Africa? It is. It would be. Okay. Um. I say Nigeria. It was Nigeria. Ah, right. I've got pretty a solid guess. Pretty solid. I've got guess. a little list here if we want to go through. Okay. Yeah. Go right. for it. Go for it. I'll give you the ones that I, I at least know. Uh, Jay Ajayi. Jay Ajayi was from England. Yeah. London. Yeah. London. Okay, Ziggy answer. Oh, Ghanaian. Oh, wow, that was a fair play to you there. Well, former um, Seahawk, so uh, uh, I, of course. Yeah. Um, I'm go. Oh, Ozzy Umanyori, Yora. Umanyora, he's he's English as well, is he? He was that good at this. I would have never gotten that. <laughs> I I know that because he did a he does a lot of stuff for the BBC, so it would make sense uh, if he was. He also won the Super Bowl with the Giants, and now I'm like. Mm, now I feel yeah. terrible for not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should have done that. Uh, okay. Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward. 
He's got to be Canadian then, is he? Oh, this is a good one. If you don't know this, this is a good one. Okay. Um, so, so not, not Canadian. Canadian. Not Canadian. I, it, it's got, obviously, it's going to be something obscure. It is you know what I bet you it is? I bet you it so, is. It's, new, bet Newfoundland. It's mili- not Newfoundland. I bet you it's military parents and he's from Germany or somewhere like that. I don't know about military parents, but I feel like this place could be like the result of military parents. Do you want to know? Go on. Is it? Oh, man. No. It's no. South Korea. Oh, 100% military. 100% yeah. military parents. 100%. Yeah. That's fucking mad. Okay, last one. Sebastian Janikowski. Poland. Sebas. Sebas, yes. Mm. Oh. It's not, he's not from the sea, is he? No, no, he's not a sea bass <laughs> himself. Although he was born to sea bass parents. So not, did you hear himself. my guess or are you just politely ignoring it because it's wrong? I was politely ignoring it. It's absolutely <laughs> right, <Fionn. laughs> He was an under seven uh, all Polish uh, football, like soccer player. Whoa, Whoa really? Okay. Wait, I would have guessed Sebastian Janikowski. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, the second name sort of lends to it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That but look, listen, guys, we, there, we were meant to have um our off season series continue tonight we're meant to be talking to the Bro- about the broncos um with uh, andrew mason from denver sports radio but unfortunately uh something con- scheduling conflict has arisen and we're not able to uh, have him on the show today well, we'll i'm sure we'll definitely have him on uh, in the future but scenes that we are doing some sort of a show tonight i want to get a little bit of business out of the way before we go any further and that's uh, if you haven't paid attention to our uh, social media uh, this past week and um, we've decided uh, to part ways with the dynamo podcast network and um, we are deciding to go out on our own into the big bad world of podcasting and see if we can go at it ourselves um, and to spread our legs and fly or is that just me? Mm, yeah. Uh, sh- okay, sure. You can do that um, on your own time outside of podcast hours. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we just want to say thank you to Ian and all the team at the network for the fantastic support uh, since the start, at the start of the year. You know, they're really supportive, uh, allowing us to uh, put our podcast on their network. Um, and, you know, they've been very gracious in the fact in their decision to to move off it as well. So we wish them all the best in the future. And don't make sure you are tuned into the podcast network for some fantastic shows. If you uh, have any interest outside of football, like we don't. Um, so if you do like your if you do like your wrestling, if you do like your football, you know, if you like your pop culture shows and stuff like that, that is definitely the place to go for a great collection of podcasts. But let's. But what I want to ask as well, because this week, and Fionn, you're not too high on this, so we'll get your reasons why about this, but the schedule releases this week. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the Athletic broke a piece now today saying that we're looking at two London games this year. and um, There'll be no New Mexico game due to the, to um, COVID over there. They're, they're not dealing with that as well as other countries. So the two games are going to be in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as well. Um, it looks like the Jaguars and the Falcons are the two teams that are going to be the home teams in that. So that means no Seahawks in, in London this year for me and and no Giants in London for Jake either. But it could be Washington because Washington are due to travel to Atlanta to take on the Falcons next season in the schedule. So that could be the game that's picked for the uh, London game. But I want to get your opinions on it. And before we do, I want you to ask to see if it's fair because just looking at it in terms of how the new season is with the extra game, and this season the AFC teams are all getting an extra home game, but now the Atlanta Falcons are already down a home game, and now they're going to be down another home mm-hmm. game because they have to go over to London now to play. So instead of having their uh, eight home games, they're only going to have seven. Or in, so would you not think it'd be fair to have two AFC sides to be the home teams this year? I think I the only unfair part about it for me, I think, is 
like the traveling to London is hard. Like if you don't mm-hmm. do that right, your players are all going to be off sorts. Out of, like their clock is going to be different. And like we've seen it, the, the London games tend to just give you a, a one-sided. The team that's better prepared does a lot better than London games. That's why Jacksonville Jaguars always seem to win, a squeak out a win towards the end of them games. Um, but if you're a good team, it shouldn't matter all that much. It's preparation. And so I, I don't want to give an excuse for teams that are, are just going to say, oh, we don't have that second home game. But it's, it's the way it rolls. Next year, they're not going to have that. So, Yeah, I think I agree with Jake. It's it's a toss of a coin, right? Is it is it the same as losing one of your extra home games next season anyway? So do you care whether it comes off your, your short year or your long year in terms of home games now that we, we have the new extra game scheduled? So it's going to rotate. Uh, I don't know. I feel like players kind of enjoy it. I know it's grueling, like Jake said, but it's something different. It changes up your schedule a little bit. Yes, it's not a home game. That's unfortunate. But it's also not a traditional away game for the other team either. So it's it's not like you flip the home scheduled game to an away scheduled game. It's essentially the same as a, as a neutral venue game. And some of the guys quite enjoy that. So uh, I think a, a no, lot of I, players... Go on, Fionn. I was just going to finish up and say no. I don't. I don't think they'll be too worried about the fact that they they'll have to fly over to England on their short season, let's call it, versus the, their long home season next season. I don't think a lot of players seem to be keen on it, and I, I know a lot of the. Oh, certainly uh, not. No. Yeah, I know. But like the states fans, sometimes they like the American fans that they, they don't like it so much because obviously they can't like it's going to be hard for them to get over and watch a london game and also like for them it's going to be the game starts at probably nine or ten o'clock i don't know if you've ever been over to the states to a game you just like drink all day and you don't want to start drinking at nine on your sunday (laughs) and especially if it's on if it's on the west coast it's even earlier like that's it's crazy so they probably even it'd be six o'clock in the morning or something for them well, look, that's for them to get over, right? We have to stay up. We have, If we want to watch Sunday Night Football, we have to stay up. Uh, we have to be ready at 20 past 12 or 20 past 1 for kickoff. Do you know what? You know, it's about time they hurt a little. Do you know where I'd love to go? If I wouldn't hurt so much if they moved the games to Germany. I would love to go to a game in Germany. That would be class. I think there they is have a bigger talk fan of adding. Yeah, there is talk of adding a game to Germany in the next uh, couple of years, which I'd be all for as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, Just because I got to go over to Germany. And even like, I, I'd love to get into Croker now. Croke Park wouldn't be a, a bad place to go, like 20 minutes away from me. <laughs> yeah, I think unfortunately the college football killed us there. If if we'd have sold out the college games, 100% they would have brought an NFL game because it's mm-hmm. even nearly as big as the, as the Wembley and Probably definitely bigger than the Tottenham. I assume I don't have their. I don't. Their I don't know about that now, Fionn. If the call, like, I don't know if the college game killed it so much because I, I, I don't know if, like, you know, maybe in America, yeah. college and NFL are a lot closer. But when it comes to international, it's definitely like NFL, college. There's definitely mm-hmm. more think, of an interest there for sure. That's true. That's I think true. The, re- the main reason is because, like, uh, the NFL, like a lot of big companies group ireland and england together in the same kind of yeah. group especially when yeah. it's global companies so it would be uk and ie so that means the the game would just be in uk because they would be considered the same spot now but you i don't really know if you've played... ever been to the college game over here have you i have no. a couple of times actually i i bought tickets one year off at the american stub hub off a season ticket holder for the the Yellow Jackets, the UCF, Georgia Tech, anyway. Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, yeah. And we were sitting bang middle on the fifty yard line, uh, surrounded by Yellow Jackets fans, and they were all screaming. It was amazing. It was brilliant. Yeah, I I went to the Penn State. I don't. That was my Boston, first one as well. Boston College, I believe they played Penn State, Boston College, and I know um, the quarterback for Penn State at that point was. Met Zach Mettenberger, I think, yep. or someone like that, and yeah, he yeah. set the school record for passing yards in a game at that match, which was pretty impressive to see. Now, unfortunately, Boston College weren't up to much, so it was pretty much a blowout, but uh, it was fantastic. And I love Penn State's chant, it was yeah. amazing. We were all screaming. That was- 
there was my first game as well that we had actually tickets for Hill 16 at that time, but didn't they didn't open it in the end. But mm-hmm. I think now you said Penn State or Mettenberg set their school record for like whatever it was, most passing yards. I personally set my most amount of points I'd ever drank <laughs> in one sitting <laughs> at that game. Two records were set that day, boys and girls. <laughs> Personal best for me. <laughs> Personal best of three. Yeah, missed every. They set up a fan zone in Temple Bar. I don't know if you went to that, Jake. I did not make it there. <laughs> missed every. They had this inflatable tent with three like holes in it. You had to throw the footballs through. Ah. Missed every target, and that was the end of my premature quarterback career. <laughs> Have you guys gone to any of the London games? Oh, I go every year. Um, yeah. yeah. I love to, we have a group of us go over. I don't know if you've ever seen the pictures of us gone over. Wait, As referees. Oh, I got to I see if it'll show up on the camera. I went and I watched a classic between the Cincinnati Bengals and the then Washington Redskins, now Washington football team, which right. ended in, of all things, a draw. I've never <laughs> seen the Washington football team win a match. <laughs> No, I, 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 I've gone to only one, um, and that was Wembley, and that was uh, the Seahawks when they faced the Raiders. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> we even made little yellow flags, and we were throwing them all around the stadium. And I have a friend who has no interest in the American football, but comes anyway, and he was just looking at me, Jake, uh, can I throw a yellow flag now? And I was like, yeah, Carl, you can throw a yellow flag now. And he just launched it down into the stands. Now it's just yeah. a tissue. And it just, every time he threw it, somebody would just pass it back up to us. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, you know, that was the, my only one was the Seahawks and the Raiders there a couple of years ago. Um, but I don't know. I see like this. Crack. They are good crack. I, I'll see maybe um, about this coming year. Um, I, that's one thing I've never gone to a football game that has not involved the Seattle Seahawks. So it would be a definitely a weird uh, weird thing seeing two football teams that I really don't care for that much. But look, we'll never see. We'll never know. Uh, to the Seahawks one, probably the same game you were in London. And uh, Al McGrath is a huge, huge Seahawks fan as well. And while the rest of us were pissing about drunk as skunks, he was really intently watching the game. Like a fair play. He, he was a big fan of that game. We were really drunk though watching that game. I don't think he appreciated it so much. <laughs> I, I, I have been to some of the weirdest games. I went to the London again. Obviously, that was the Cincinnati-Washington draw, which never happens. And then I went to probably the coldest football match I've <laughs> ever been to. We had the pleasure of going to the last game of the season in MetLife Stadium against the Giants, uh, where the Giants were out. And we had the magnificent Kirk Cousins under center. All he had to do was win. And we were in. And the Giants couldn't give a shit. They, I don't think they even played Eli Manning. We managed to lose in, I swear to God, it was minus 15 degrees Celsius. Everyone walking into the stadium was in their, like, camo hunting onesie. And we were the <laughs> Irish idiots who showed up out of nowhere to minus 15 degrees Celsius weather. A man bought a beer, a pint of beer. Five <laughs> minutes in, it was frozen an inch thick at the top. It was ridiculous. And then, the, then I got to see the third game. It was the Washington against the Bears two seasons ago when our offensive lineman famously got hit with that hezzy where the Bears, fan, the Bears defensive lineman goes, oh, I'm not blitzing. And he went grand and he just moved off. And the Bears guy just went, oh, thanks. And ran in and sacked. <laughs> who was who was the quarterback then? It was uh it wasn't still Kirk, was it? No, who did we get after that? It wasn't it was I wanna say Cutler, but it wasn't Cutler, but it was the equivalent of Cutler. Uh <laughs> who was it? That's actually a good good one. I got like, a good that, like um, that MetLife Stadium is probably like it's so cold when it's cold. I was there in, in mid December and it was like every the floor is cold, the seats are freezing, but good game the the tailgate outside is good crack though absolutely good crack yeah what was you went to century link did you i did go to century link i went a few years ago um for the seahawks going up against the books and it was actually an overtime win by the seahawks and we um so you were saying you got like great tickets for the college game like right in on the 50 yard line we were the same we got then we were up in the heavens but 
we were on the 50 yard line and I wouldn't even call it the heavens because you could still see everything perfect. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's, you know, the the crowd, it was just unbelievable. You can't, like, just my, I, we couldn't talk for two days afterwards because we were just shouting throughout the whole game. It was absolutely fantastic. It was an overtime win. It, it was a classic shootout game as well, which was brilliant. Um, I think it was, uh, it was DK Metcalf's first year. It was James Winston's famous 30 for 30 season as well. So, um, it was a, uh, uh, it was great. Okay, and we, uh, we, it was great because we, and we got a, an Airbnb, and we got a, an apartment. It was actually it overlooked Century Link Field. So for like the two days before the game, it was just right there. You could just see it. And we found uh, because we're Irish, we found an Irish bar. It's absolutely never put fantastic. Past an Irish it called... to find an Irish bar wherever he is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was called. Uh, what was it called? It was called Fado, right? Uh, it was brilliant, and the, when we went in there, we weren't sure. It was just we were actually on our way to a different Irish bar, but we came across this one first. So we said, ah, well, look, we'll go in." And um, the the lady serving us was actually someone who was from Clare. So you know, she she emigrated over a while ago. So because she found out we were Irish, she looked she looked after us for the whole weekend. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, and then on game day, we said, "Right, we'll go there beforehand, and we'll get a couple of drinks." You know might get a bit of breakfast there before and stuff. And it was packed. But then as soon as she saw us walk in the door, she just pulled us over and gave us two seats right in front of the bar, set a table for us. And we were getting looked after throughout the whole time. And the same, the same two seats were there waiting for us when we came back <laughs> after the game then as well. Nice. Um, it was, it was a brilliant, it was a brilliant time over there. And I uh, can't wait to go back over to, to Seattle to see a game or even just, even if it is London next year, like I actually hope it is a a, a Falcons a Washington game next year because the Under Center podcast will be going on tour <laughs> and we're all going for that game. <laughs> Fionn, did you find the name of the quarterback? I did. It was the magnificent future Hall of Famer that is Case Keenum. Oh, oh of course, yeah. Of course, Case Keenum. I'm just looking at this. So 2017. These are the quarterbacks that the Washington football team have had that has, start, that has started a game, even one. Kirk Cousins in 2017 played all of them. Then we had Alex Smith, Joss Johnson, Colt McCoy, Mark Sanchez, Case Keenum, Dwayne Haskins, Kyle Allen, that is and then a, Taylor Heineke. That is Was a that- carousel of quarterbacks. Was that season? Was that the season before or after Case Keenum played in Minnesota and was part of the whole Minnesota Miracle team? That was the the next season. He we signed them. Yeah, I think straight from that. Or do, or do we trade from? I don't even remember. But he was our starter and was so poor he got benched for the even poorer Dwayne Haskins, <laughs> and that is saying something. <laughs> Dara, you mentioned yeah. DK Metcalf. Can we talk about his Olympic running? Let's uh, talk about it. Mil- that boy well, can run. Let's do it. He can yeah. run. For a big man, he can run. Yeah. So what is he, 6'4", 256, oh, I think easy. I saw? Something like that, yeah. And That's he ran a 10, 10, 10, 10, 3, 7. 10, 3, 7. Yeah. And was but top you... five after the 40, like, what is the 40 yards? Yeah. So he did just he... ran out of steam at oh, the no, end. He was, there for, he was there with them throughout the whole. I think it was like, the, like you were saying, the last... The last forty yards, they sort of pulled away. But did you see the interview afterwards where he's taught, where he's interviewed? I think alongside the winner, where like it's it's basically like the movie Twins. Like he's Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the winner was like Danny DeVito. You know, in um, fairness, I from I know very little about the world of track athletics, but I do know there seems to be a pendulum that swings. You either get lads who are like Usain Bolt, who are ridiculously tall and have these massive levers in which they run really fast or you have these tiny squat lads that are just a ball of muscle that can just launch mm-hmm. themselves as quick as possible so yeah. obviously we're in the short lad phase at the moment maybe he would have had a chance but everyone actually since since that was announced and everything everyone's talking about what nfl players would be good in the olympics and who would you go for and stuff like that so like could you think of any players that come to mind that michael would have my current Michael player. Vick ran a 40 there a minute ago. He's uh 40 years of age, four, 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 and he ran a 
Four seven four something like that. Yeah, four seven four at the age of whatever he is. I don't even know what age yeah. he is. Forty at the age of forty. So we're talking about NFL players that we'd like to see run hundred yard dashes or hundred meters. Or any yeah. event in the Olympics, you know. Okay. Like Aaron would Donald like... would probably be a good weightlifter. Yes. Or uh, the shot put. Or shot put. I, I would yeah. like to see Gardner Minshew do anything in the Olympics. <laughs> because Gard- he would Gardner be Minshew would you know that you know that gymnastic uh, event where like they have the little <laughs> ribbon and stuff like that. Him with that would be that brilliant would be with, uh, with his I, mullet and his mustache. There you go. Give him the gold medal he's won. Can you imagine the leotard? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Here's another topic. The new jersey numbers that players could pick from. How do you feel about it? Did we talk about this before? Oh guys, before uh, we move on, before we move yeah. on, I found the exact number that Michael Vick ran for his 40 yard dash at the age of 40 he ran a 472 and if wow. you remember at the age of 23 mr tim tebow ran a 471 <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez fair play to him for it, mick yeah. for keeping up to his uh to keeping his fitness up all right so how do we stand yeah. on the, the the new jersey numbers um you know, don't I care. don't. It doesn't really bother me. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. bother me. Doesn't the only, the only reason, the only reason I would care is if I bought yeah. a jersey for a certain player and then they changed it. You know, yeah. uh, I, I hope they don't bring in the, the zero. I'm not a fan of the zero. No, I wouldn't be either. Or double zeros. Or Any zero? Like no, 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 no. But I'll like, it, like the rule was as well for like so for the draft class, it was fine. Like they don't have a number beforehand, so they could pick one. But for other players that wanted to change, they had to buy out the NFL stock of replica jerseys. <laughs> um, so the NFL don't lose out on money. I so mean, that's a good way numbers. of doing it, right? If you're a massive <laughs> name and you want to go to a throwback jersey, fine, pay the money. If you're not, then it's like, shut up. This isn't important. You paid the last <laughs> six years of your career. Nobody knows who you are. Like, relax. Keep your number 57 and who just calm that, down. Who was it that uh, looked at the entire NFL stock the other day and was like, no, I'm not buying me number. <laughs> I imagine one of the big. I imagine yeah. like either Tom Brady or maybe Mahomes. I feel Tom like Brady he was a wide hates receiver. the change. He hates it. Yeah, he's given out like a wide receiver. Who's the? Point. Who would you guess then? While we're on this, while we're on our guessing game show, <laughs> let's find out who has the highest selling jersey non quarterback, or let's say wide receiver. Then, if Jake thinks it's wide receiver, non quarterback. Oh, or specific wide receiver. What are you talking about? Uh, we'll go specific wide receiver first. That's a tough one. It is a tough one. I I'd say Odell. Oh, that's a great shout. That's a good question. That's a good point. Not, not certainly not last year though, right? I'd say still. I have some numbers here, but they're probably fake numbers because it's probably going to come out, come out with. It's on uh, the NFL. It's on team. the NFL website, <laughs> and it says from November. It must be November last year, but I don't know if it is for sure. Mm. And they have Adam Thielen. Oh, no, sorry. I'm ah. reading it the wrong way. I'm oh, reading it okay. the wrong way around. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it showed me last to first. So the top wide receiver is going to be Juju Smith-Schuster. Oh, TikTok right. star. That's why. The top yeah. non-quarterback is a good one, though. God. You've got to um, go to number six to get to him. And it makes a little bit of sense if you really like think it out. Aaron Did you Donald. play offense or defense? Offense. Yeah, see, defense not getting the love as usual. Um, <laughs> okay. I'll give you I'll give you one free grass and then I'll give you a massive clue. Can 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 we ask? Uh, like this is gonna be like 20 questions here now. Um, AFC or NFC? NFC is it Devontae um, Adams? Not Devontae Adams. Oh, Darry, that was a good show. Yes, you that have to guess show. now, and then I'll give you a massive clue on whoever buzzes in and gets it. Okay, NFC non quarterback offense. Try Devontae Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
I'm going to go with Alvin Kamara. It's not Alvin Kamara. So you got guess, to think on jersey here. sales, think like huge states and huge teams. Is it like Saquon Barkley? It's not Saquon Barkley, but you're on the right track. Think Ezekiel like Ezekiel Elliott. Yes, it's Ezekiel uh, Elliott okay. at number that six. Makes that makes sense. Yeah, okay. George yeah. Kittle, respectable, number eight. Oh, okay. I didn't expect that now. Eh? Okay, the first defensive player on the list is at number 13. Ooh. Is it Aaron Donald? It's not Aaron Donald. It's not. Mm, weird. Not a sexy pick. Oh, I don't think Aaron great. Donald is even on this list. I'll have to double check the list. This Before is the we top... go on, let go me ahead. read out the PFT tweet. I found who it was that didn't want to buy his own jersey. Dalvin, Dalvin Cook looked into changing yeah. to number four. Yeah, and he okay. found out that it would be roughly $1.5 million <laughs> to buy the current uh, inventory. He said, no, I'm sticking with 33. <laughs> <laughs> he got paid last season. He could well afford that. He got so paid he massive money. Afford it. And he could yeah. probably just sell them on or charity auction them off or something. Well, I was going to say, like, why couldn't he just do a deal with the NFL saying, if I buy these jerseys, will he give that money to charity or something? Mm-hmm. And that would have been great. Um, but anyway, defensive player. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Let me see. Defensive Is it TJ Watt? It's not TJ Watt. He's on the list, but he's at number 25. Okay. Miles number... Garrett. It's not Miles Garrett either. I think it's NFC, but I'm not big on teams. NFC You're or uh, NFC. an NFL podcaster who's not yeah. big on NFL. And I don't teams. know which conferences teams are in. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> oh, I have to be completely man. honest. I have no idea. But I'm pretty sure it's NFC. Right, so it's a lesser known team. Then is this player on the uh, team for a yeah. while? Like uh, he, he's not been recently signed or traded to this team. He was drafted by this team. Okay. Oh Bale. okay. Is it Ronald Derby? It's not Ronald Derby. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the wrong coast. I had oh. an idea of one, but I don't think it is because surely you would know that this team is in the NFC. Hold so on, I don't want to. I don't want to lose a guess. Team. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want to lose a guess by saying this player's name. So, um, say the say the name. We'll give you. I was going to say. Bo- I was going to say Bobby Wagner. It's not Bobby. It's Wagner. not Bobby Wagner. <laughs> um, I don't know if you're, you're going to have to give us a good hint here. Okay, he's a defensive position- end. Defensive end. It's not JJ Watt, is it? It's not JJ Watt. No, because he wasn't drafted. And I am correct that it is the NFC. I don't know. I think we're, we've gone on way too long with this one here. No, yeah. I'm going to get this. Don't. I, I want to uh, get you this. You can't give so much dead air to the people. I want to get this. Want. Come on. Come on. I want to get so def- definitely NFC. Come on, we can do this. NFC, NFC. and defensive end. NFC defensive end. Come drafted by this t- team. Drafted by the team. So we can get this. I'm guessing it's probably it could be an NFC South team. Is it oh, Cam right. Jordan? It's an NFC West team. NFC West. Well, Seattle's division. Yep. So, and it's not Aaron Donald. It's not Aaron Donald. He's a defensive tackle. Is I it Michael Brockers? Him. It's not Michael Brockers. <laughs> That's a he got, tra- know. It's a he got traded. Guess. I know. He got traded to play with Jared Goff after criticizing Jared Goff. So, like, come on. Oh, actually, um, that's where I got that name. I hadn't made notes. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't be Joey Bosa, would it? Mm-hmm. Uh, Joey Bosa, really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it kind of makes sense. He's probably the biggest, newest defensive end, apart from Nick. Oh wait, hold yeah. on. Nick, no, he's Joey's right, on the he's other right upside down again. It is. It is. Nick Bosa. Yeah, Joey's Nick on Bosa. the Chargers. Joey's yeah. Joey's his other brother who's on the Chargers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sorry, it is Nick yeah. Bosa. I forgot about him. Actually, it was a nice year off without him there last year. 
But yeah, but in terms of numbers, yeah, it doesn't really doesn't really bother me about the numbers either. Uh, about changing at all. I think uh, I liked it the old way. I, like I don't, I don't like seeing like a wide receiver or a defensive end at, yeah. at one. <laughs> I just don't like. It. I like it the other way. Yeah. What do you think I of? Uh, I never understood why like some wide receivers could be a thirteen or an eighty-seven. Yeah, I, like Odell was thirteen, but why can he be that low? I don't know. Is there something to do with slot and, and outside receiver or something? That I don't know. No, I would have thought all wide receivers would be classed in the same bracket. Um, okay, but what what do you guys think about the um, the division that the supposed camps are causing? You know, like Tom Brady doesn't want to be doing any camps this year. Um, what Tom other Brady players like have to do any camps? That's my opinion on that. The camps, like, like the yeah. camps, are generally the, the most advantageous for the younger guys or roster bubble yeah. players. So, like yeah. Tom Brady or any big player can skip them. They can forego yeah. the fine. If, if a player not. wouldn't play in the in the preseason, then he wouldn't really give yeah. a shit about the camps. To be honest, yeah. 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 But see, that's well, the thing. I, it's 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 a voluntary camp, so I don't understand why don't he's volunteer. encouraging other people not to go. Like, if you don't want to go, don't go. That's like, okay there are him, players yeah. that like your contract is set, Tom. Like you, you don't have to worry. But there's so many players there that are vying for roster spots that they have to go. Like if they want a job next year, some they're only voluntary in name for a lot of players, aren't they? A lot of them have them written into their contracts. They have to show up to these things. Otherwise, it's probably benefits. Like they get a bonus if they, if they yeah. if they show up. workout bonus. It's a, I think it's called. Yeah, they get they get a bonus, but. Like if you don't uh, get the if you don't go and you get injured, like um, the, the Denver right tackle, the Denver tackle, yeah, uh, James, wasn't it? Linval James, yeah. Linval James. Yeah. You yeah. know he gets tackled, ta- or tackled, injured off site, <laughs> uh, and now he's in. He's risking his like basically not making a penny next ten, ten million dollars. I think it is. Yeah, um, he loses by um, having worked out off. So, but that's just yeah. crazy. Like that's one benefit you could say. This is why you should at least attend these uh, mm-hmm. voluntary training sessions. I mean, I know that he is crazy, but that's something that your your agent and your manager should be telling you. Is like in the same way as these guys don't ride motorbikes, right? Because they know if I get injured on a motorbike, I'm not getting paid. Tell them, yeah, I know you're doing a good thing for the team, and you're going to do a good thing for yourself. Just don't do it. Like it's not yeah. worth the risk yeah. of I think, like what I do you think he, there's if if he'd have gone through it all without getting injured, what did he gain? Would he have come back a million percent better than he did last season? No. He maybe gets into the preseason five, ten percent stronger than he would have been, but he by the end of the pre do, do you know what I mean? So yeah. like I think there's certain players that actually have it written into their contract. I think that they can't go on jet skis and all this kind of stuff. Oh, I would say almost all. I think every contract like is five that. Like million you, quid yeah. plus is definitely yeah. has that in it. If you injure yourself off off site, then we can terminate your contract without paying you a penny. That's where all this controversy, I think, is coming from as well. It's just that yeah. I'm guessing that was in his contract, you know. And and look, it's not it's not even the team's fault, right? They put that in to stop crazy young kids with a load of money doing really stupid stuff when they're investing in them and that like people have a problem with that ideology, but that is right. You made these kids rich. You deserve to also get your value the for that money. From, now the yeah. problem comes with these vet guys who are doing the right thing for themselves and the team, but contracts are law, right? And law isn't a person it's black or white. So you either were off site and you injured yourself. You might as well have been on a jet ski or in a weight room. It makes no difference to the contract yeah. and a lot of the time whether the team wants to or not they can't set the precedent of letting you off because then every guy's agent from then on goes yeah. oh well as long as he wasn't on a jet ski and crashed into a cliff they're going no well he was benefiting the team by being here there or whatever so they kind of yeah. have to be super strict on this stuff i like in a logical point of view as well like in a real world point of view if it was the case say for example <laughs> like it, the way the way James uh, contract is happened, I think he was injured the first year. He sat out last year because of COVID, and then he gets injured this year. So it's the equivalent of like if I if I start a new job, I don't go in for the first year because I 
like hurt my baby toe. Last year I didn't go in because I was afraid of COVID. And this year I was uh, out on a jet ski and I hurt myself and I still expect mm-hmm. to be paid after that. And it's like, I yeah. won't get paid for that. So yeah, I think that the teams are definitely right in that sense that like, listen, we can't pay you for this just because mm-hmm. you got injured off. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, I think there is a bit of a saving grace that he did not completely banish himself from the the training facility, the, the team training facility. He was there in and out. But when the actual injury happened was when he was working out in, in a separate place. So they might find some way of giving him something. I don't know. but I'd say like, they probably, they'll keep him on the roster. He'll get his medical compensation for being able to uh, attend the doctors and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. And maybe they might give him some part of his thing. But I don't think they should. Pay, maybe not. The he's not going to be anyway. poor anyway. I think yes, we, can, sure. uh, I think we before, can all agree on that. Yeah. Before we wrap up, can we do a little segment called Best NFL 2021 draft players' names. We'll probably come up with a better name for that after. Oh, this. yeah. I don't Let really. I haven't, no, I'll read, I haven't. I haven't seen, I haven't okay. seen many strange names. Mm. Right. I'll give you my favorite, or will okay. I lead up to that? I'll lead up to my favorite. Yeah, some notable favorite. Some notable okay. mentions. Yeah. Ian Book, quarterback, Notre Dame. That's, uh, normal. That's yeah, normal. normal. All right. He got drafted by the by the Saints. He's a. Uh, he's a. Uh, he, He's a journalist's dream, you know. I might. Okay. I've seen him play. He might be okay. By the way, he's not going to be yeah. too terrible. Uh, your headlines Hank alone, Hank. though, you know, I could be butchering this name. Chuba Hubbard, Oklahoma. Chuba State. Hubbard is pretty good. I like that name. <laughs> I, knew, I knew him in in college. He's a running back. He's not chubby whatsoever. He's a lightning bolt in a bottle. But yeah, another guy who actually might be around the league for a few years as well. So. Okay, uh, wide receiver, Indiana, Hwap Fillior. Okay, that's my favorite so far. I like Hwap. Hwap. Yeah. Uh, another one, Daz okay. Newsom. I just like Daz. I'm a fan of Daz. <laughs> yeah, his surname isn't particularly magnificent, but... No. no. Uh, let's say Alex... No, that's Alex Leatherwood's not that good. Uh, Tommy Tremble, Notre Dame tight end. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Will Fries. Yeah. No. You're, no, getting no, into no. The, you're getting into the like the five year old laughing at the name Willie kind of area. Like, oh, I get it. I'm not that mature. Okay, I get it. All right, defensive end, Shaka Tony. Shaka Tony, that's a great name. I like it. That's all right. Um, well, Shaka about... Khan, you should change his name to him. Shaka Khan. What about the uh, wide receiver Amon Ra? Uh, St. Brown? Amon Ra is a great name. That's a good name. Full on Egyptian. Yeah. Okay, and I'll give you my favorite. Okay. Long snapper, Cameron Cheeseman. Yeah, that's the yeah, Washington guy that's I love. It. Him. That's my winner. Face the franchise for a long time. That's my Just the trick not getting tr- not getting picked by the Packers though. Yeah. Or not going to Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> you know that would have been it. That would have been. But look, I think I think on on that it's a perfect time to wrap up this impromptu sort of, you know, talking about absolutely random bits of news in the NFL at the moment. So uh, before we go, guys, if you can, can you please like this video and subscribe to the Under Center podcast because that's our new podcast channel. Um, also follow us on our socials, uh, facebook.com forward slash Under Center pod. Uh, we are uh, Instagram and Twitter at Under Center pod. And also for the audio side of the podcast, exact same thing. Just search Under Center podcast. If you can't find us right away, just give it a couple of days. We're still waiting to be cleared off on Apple podcasts and stuff. So it kind of takes a little while, but we will be there soon. I promise. Jake, Fionn, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for this impromptu chat, actually. It was quite enjoyable. No problem. Enjoy it. Got to get the banter bus going sometimes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that is it for this episode of the under center podcast we'll be back soon hopefully continuing our off season series but until then stay safe and we'll speak soon